Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christy. My name is Dr. Christy Reisinger, and today I'd like to introduce six new anti-obesity medications that are in development and hopefully should be available to market in the next couple of years. One of the things that we're gonna start noticing is more combinations. And some terms to start listening for are amylin analogs and glucagon receptor agonists. These medications are gonna be used in combination with the GLP-1 receptor agonists like semaglutide and terzepatide that are already on the market. Five of the six medications have completed phase two trials. Phase two trials tend to be smaller and they study the effectiveness of the medication and they use often lots of different doses of the medication to figure out which one is the best. Phase three trials tend to be much larger. They're usually compared to a placebo or current treatment. And phase three trials are the last trials that need to be done before FDA approval and availability to the public. Okay, first up, let's start with bimagrimab. This medication is really unusual and different. It's a human monoclonal antibody that encourages fat loss and improves insulin resistance. This medication is given through IV infusion every four weeks. So that alone makes it, I think, less exciting than some of the other medications, just because it's gonna be so difficult to get. You're gonna to have to go to an infusion center. This medication seems to be stuck in phase two trials as well. So I don't think this medication is coming to market anytime soon. Let's look at their phase two trial that they did. The study was 48 weeks long and the change in body weight was about 6.5%. Some interesting side effects included diarrhea and muscle spasms in about 41% of participants. Next up is Cagrosima, and this is a combination between Cagrolintide and Semaglutide. Cagrolintide is a, a long-acting amylin analog, and that's really a new player that we haven't seen other medications using yet. Amylin is a hormone that's produced by the pancreas, and that helps to suppress hunger and slow down the gut. So this amylin analog is like that, and this medication combines it with semaglutide, which is already on the market. It's a GLP-1 receptor agonist that we're seeing in medications like Wagovia and Ozempic. This medication's moving into phase three trials under the name Redefine. Let's look at the data from their phase two trial. So it was 32 weeks long, Patients lost about, on average, 16% of their body weight, and 29% of patients experienced nausea. Next up is a medication called servodutide, and this is a glucagon receptor agonist combined with a GLP-1. So as I mentioned previously, glucagon is a new exciting player that's being combined with medications that are already on the market. Glucagon works by promoting the breakdown of fat, reducing appetite, and it helps to break down fats more easily. This medication's moving into phase three trials under the name Synchronize, and I would expect this medication to be commercially available probably in a few years. Let's look at their phase two trial data together. So it was 46 weeks long. People on average lost about 15 to 19% of their body weight but quite a bit of nausea, about 60% of patients experienced nausea. Next up is a medication that there's been a lot of buzz about already. It's a medication called retitrutide or triple G. It has a glucagon receptor agonist, a GLP-1 receptor agonist and GIP in it. So it's basically like Zepbound or Manjaro plus this glucagon receptor agonist. What's impressive about this study is that 100% of patients that participated lost at least 5% of their body weight. That's incredible data, so exciting. We have not seen that type of data with any other medication before. This medication is currently moving into phase three trials under the name Triumph. Let's look at their phase two trial data together. It was 48 weeks long. People lost on average 24% of their body weight, which is incredible data. But there was also quite a bit of nausea, 45 to 60% of patients had that. And lastly, there's really been a push to develop oral anti-obesity medications. One of the medications in development is Orphoglipron, and this is a GLP-1 agonist. Let's look at their phase two trial data together. So it was 36 weeks long, people lost on average about 12% of their body weight, and there still was quite a bit of nausea, 37 to 58% of patients had that. And lastly, oral semaglutide. Now this medication has just completed phase three trials, so the next step for that would be FDA approval. I would expect this medication to be one of the first on the market. We already have oral semaglutide available under the name Rivelsis, 
only for patients with type 2 diabetes, but at much lower doses. So the max dose of ribelsis is 14 milligrams, but what's being studied with the oral semaglutide as an anti-obesity medication is at much higher doses. Think 25 milligrams, 50 milligrams. So let's look at their phase three data together. This trial lasted an impressive 68 weeks and people lost about 15% of their body weight, but about 50% of patients also had nausea. Now the thing with the oral GLP-1 medications is that you have to take them daily and you have to be very particular about how you take them. They need to be taken on an empty stomach, 30 minutes before any food with a glass of water. So sometimes that makes it a little bit tricky for patients to use, but overall I do feel like there's a lot of excitement around moving away from the injectable medications to an oral form. I know it will help reduce cost. So here's my summary. Oral semaglutide I would expect to come to market sometime in 2025 for the treatment of obesity. But out of all these medications, really retitrutride is the one that there's the most buzz about because it's been the most effective. There are scammers on the internet that are trying to already sell retitrutide. If you're seeing retitrutide advertised on the internet for purchase, it is fake, it's a scam because it's not available commercially to anyone it's still under study and still in trials. So don't be fooled. I wanted to share information about these medications because I feel like knowledge is power. And if you're currently struggling with an anti-obesity medication, either because you can't access it or because it's too expensive or it just simply doesn't work, I wanna give you hope. There are new medications currently being developed and I think that's only gonna continue with time. And as scientists learn more about the complex hormones involved with satiation, satiety, and as we learn more about obesity as a disease in general. Remember that I am a physician, but I'm not your physician. So before you do anything with medications, please talk to your own doctor. Thanks for joining me.